Hey, everybody. Welcome to today's lesson in MRI Contrast. This lesson discusses the core principles of weighting in MRI, focusing on T1-weighted, T2-weighted, and proton density-weighted images, including their applications in diagnosing various pathologies. Let's get started. Before we get to the definition of weighting, let's discuss extrinsic and intrinsic contrast parameters. Remember, extrinsic contrast parameters are ones we have control over, including repetition time, TR, and echo time, TE. Intrinsic contrast parameters are ones we have no control over because they are inherent to the tissue, like the relaxation times of fat and water or the proton density of various tissues. Weighting in MRI refers to the method of adjusting the extrinsic contrast parameters to enhance the contrast between different tissues in the image based on intrinsic contrast parameters. For example, we might adjust the TR in order to weight the image based on T1 recovery time. Weighting is used to create more contrast between tissues with different properties. Without weighting, many tissues would appear similar in intensity on the MRI image. Weighting emphasizes specific properties of tissues, making it easier to distinguish between healthy and pathological areas. In this lesson, we will be discussing T1 weighting, written as T1W, T2 weighting, written as T2W, and proton density, PD weighting, written as PDW. Let's start with T1 weighting. T1 weighting maximizes T1 contrast, which emphasizes the T1 recovery time of tissue's effect on the image and minimizes T2 decay times of tissue's effect on the image. Remember, T1 recovery time is the time it takes for 63% of longitudinal magnetization to recover in a tissue. In other words, T1 recovery is an intrinsic parameter that measures the time it takes for protons in tissue to realign with the magnetic field after being excited by a radio frequency, RF, excitation pulse. T1-weighted images can be used for visualizing anatomy and pathology. T1-weighted images are particularly good at highlighting the contrast between fat, which appears bright, and water-containing tissues, which appear dark. This high level of contrast between these tissues can distinguish between adjacent structures like muscle, fat, and organs. This ability to differentiate between fat and water-containing tissues also makes T1 weighting the preferred choice when imaging areas where fat content is a significant contrast marker. A contrast marker helps to clearly delineate regions of interest in an MRI image. For example, when imaging the liver, a healthy liver has minimal fat content. However, pathologies like fatty liver disease and tumors can alter the fat content. Since fat has a short T1 recovery time, these pathological markers will appear brighter on the T1-weighted MRI image. In order to achieve a T1-weighted image, we will need to adjust the repetition time, TR. TR controls the amount of T1 contrast in an image. A short TR prevents both fat and water from fully recovering their longitudinal magnetization. A short TR emphasizes T1 contrast, and a short TE minimizes T2 contrast. T2 weighting emphasizes T2 contrast, which emphasizes the T2 decay time of different tissues. Remember, T2 decay time is the time it takes for 63% of the phase coherence to be lost. In other words, it is an intrinsic contrast parameter that measures the time it takes for the magnetic moments to stop precessing in sync with one another. T2-weighted images are used for visualizing pathologies. T2-weighted images are particularly good at highlighting the presence or lack thereof of fluids because water and other fluids have longer T2 decay times. There are many pathologies that result in increased water content in tissues, and T2-weighted images can detect the presence of edema, cysts, and other fluid accumulations. In order to achieve a T2-weighted image, we will need to adjust the echo time, TE. 
TE controls the amount of T2 contrast in an image. A longer TE combined with a longer TR allows for fat to lose more of its transverse magnetization and regain its longitudinal magnetization, limiting the amount of signal intensity. Since water has a longer T2 decay time, it loses its transverse magnetization more slowly than fat, meaning it will have more signal intensity. A long TR minimizes T1 contrast, and a long TE maximizes T2 contrast. Proton density, PD weighting, focuses on the density of hydrogen protons within tissues, providing images that reflect the true concentration of protons. It is important to note that PD contrast is present in all images to some extent, but PD weighting emphasizes PD contrast. PD weighted images are useful for both anatomy and pathology, especially in situations where T1 and T2 contrast might either exaggerate or mask certain tissues. For example, in musculoskeletal imaging, PD-weighted images with fat saturation are particularly useful when diagnosing meniscal tears. We will discuss fat saturation in a future lesson. The meniscus tear may not change the T1 characteristics of the tissue, and a T2-weighted image might exaggerate the appearance of fluid. A PD-weighted image allows for detailed visualization of the knee's structures, without exaggerating or masking the presence of meniscus tears. In order to achieve a PD-weighted image, we will need to adjust both the TR and the TE. The TR must be kept long to allow the vectors of both fat and water to fully recover longitudinal magnetization, and the TE must be kept short to prevent the vectors of both fat and water from dephasing. A long TR minimizes signal from fat, T1 contrast, and a short TE minimizes signal from fluid, T2 contrast. In summary, weighting is the method of adjusting the extrinsic contrast parameters to enhance the contrast between different tissues in the image based on intrinsic contrast parameters. In other words, weighting is used to create more contrast between tissues with different properties. T1-weighted images emphasize T1 contrast and use a short TR and a short TE. T2-weighted images emphasize T2 contrast and use a longer TR and a longer TE. Proton density-weighted images emphasize proton density contrast and use a longer TR and a shorter TE.